Hi everyone! Today we are going to be cutting up some pine logs with the Woodmiser LT15 Go Sawmill. The sawmill we have is a power feed. It was a crank feed, but we upgraded it because this way it's just easier, faster, and more efficient. Right now, I am going to begin taking off the bark of the log to turn it into a four-sided can. Then I can begin to saw into usable boards. We have our sawmill in this beautiful shed. And when we first got it, we didn't have a shed, so we parked it out in our barn. Now, I've got to tell you, if you are looking for a sawmill, try to have a shed ready for it. Because this way, we just, it, we're not getting rained on, we're out of the elements a little bit, and you can saw logs more comfortably. Also, because we have concrete, the sawdust is easier to clean up. When we were in the barn, it was a dirt floor, and it was always muddy, and just hard to clean up all the extra sawdust. This sawmill also comes with a water container that feeds the whole way to the blade to help keep the blade clean as it saws up the logs. And this is really helpful. And I'm out of water now, so I gotta fill this up. I normally stand on top of the sawmill and stretch a hose out and spray into the top of the container because this way it's way easier than lowering the container down, which later in the video I'll have to do and you'll see why. So while we're taking the time to fill up the water container, we might as well fill up the gas before it runs out. You know, this sawmill actually doesn't take too much gas. I mean, we don't fill it up very often. I'm not sure exactly how much, but it doesn't use as much gas as you would think it would. Now, when I fill up the water from the top, there's a gray valve up there that I normally turn off to fill up up there so I don't have to worry about it leaking out as I fill up which, if anyone is wondering, has happened before, and it's highly inconvenient. And, yep, I left the water on down below, so good thing I turned off that gray valve while filling up, or I would have had to do it all over again. Okay, now it's time to turn the log on the second side so that we can cut off the bark there. To do this, I need to loosen the log clamps while my dad uses the cant hook, which is the blue tool he's using, to turn the log. Now, we call I call them log dogs, them log clamps. I'm not really sure why, but you know, I like the nickname, so I'm going to call it the log dog if you're wondering. Okay, after it is positioned, I will log dog it into place while my dad holds it with the cant hook. This log is actually long enough to use two log dogs, one on either end, so after I finish this side, I'll go and do the other. Now we measure the sides of the log to see what we're going to be cutting at relative to the bed. Now what I mean by this is the one side of the log will be 10 inches high, but the other would be 11. So we'll take it to 10 because, you know, we got to take it to the lowest point. Okay, now I have my four-sided cant to start cutting. Wait a second, I forgot to add pine saw into my water. Yes, pine saw. I've got to add it into the water to help with the pine sap in the logs. Now, as I said earlier, I'm going to have to lower the water jug. But I don't know this just yet. I'm going to go find a funnel. And the funnel is not going to work, so I'm going to have to lower the jug and fill the pine saw up there. Now, I only add about a cup of pine saw to the water jug, which has about two or three gallons in it. So it's not really a high ratio, but it's just enough that it helps break down the, the pine sap a little bit. So it's not as sticky and not clocking up the blade. Yeah, probably should have added it before I filled up the jug, but you live and you learn, right? Okay, now it's time to start slicing up your cant into usable boards. Now I'm going to be making one inch boards. That means I'm going to turn the up and down crank a half turn plus two notches. Now the reason I say two notches is because if you account for the blade, which is an eighth inch, you have to go two notches, which is each one sixteenth of an inch. So this will give you your full one inch thickness of the board you need. Now, you'll see that my dad will keep coming over and checking to make sure that the boards are one inch. 
This is because the boards that I'm cutting up now are actually his. He's going to plane them down and use them on a ceiling in a shed. So he wants to make sure that he's getting his full inch. Wow, I cut that pretty fast. These editing tricks can come in handy. Okay, before you start a new log, make sure you adjust that blade guide handle that I'm doing now. Just so as you cut, the blade guide is not going to hit the log and you don't have too much slack as you cut. Now, I do have a lot of logs that go in and out. I call them smiley or frowny faces. So you may have to adjust the blade guide as you go, but that could just be my luck. Okay, I hope this video was helpful to you guys, and if you have any more questions, feel free to comment down below. Good luck and have fun. Bye!